Hello there, and thank you so much for joining me here at the Sivo Hackathon 2021. My name is Anais Urles, and I'm going to give you a walkthrough of the Sivo platform and show you how you can get started with our managed Kubernetes service. Now, once you start from the website, you will see an overview of what Sivo is all about. And you can find more information on our two different products. You can find more information on the different solutions we have in place for various businesses and types of platforms. You can find more information on the pricing and more information on our marketplace. Now, before we dive into the marketplace, I'm going to show you how you can get started with Sivo. Once you're not logged in, you can find your button that says create an account. Now, once you click on the button, you will be led to the following screen where you can sign up to Sivo and create an account. You just have to provide some basic information, such as contact details, create a password, and then once you create your account, and before you can get started, you are asked to provide credit card information. Now, it's not for us to make you pay, <laughs> but just simply to ensure that your account is authentic. Now, once you sign up and through the Sivo Hackathon, you will be provided with Sivo credits so you can get started with Sivo Kubernetes clusters. Now, I'm already logged in over here. This is how my dashboard looks like. I'm logged in as an admin. So it looks slightly different than your account as in and I have here the additional admin and content uh, tools. However, you will have in your dashboard all the other different um, menu items in place. Now, first of all, we want to take a look at the Sivo Academy section. This is especially useful if you're completely new to Kubernetes or if you want to detail, deepen your Kubernetes knowledge. Within the Sivo Academy, the Sivo staff has created lots and lots of tutorials, of video content that helps you to advance your knowledge on Kubernetes. And it can also help you throughout the hackathon, either if you have questions, if something is completely unclear or how something works in Kubernetes, or if you want to make use on specific content, concepts in Kubernetes. Now, you can also find the Sivo Academy section right here. If you go to the community tab on the main site and you click on Academy, this will lead you to the Sivo Academy section on the website where you can see further information on the different courses that we currently have listed. Additionally, since we already at the community section, we have a tutorial section. Now, the tutorial section provides you with comprehensive guides on Kubernetes, on integrating different cloud native tools with a new Kubernetes cluster, making use of different cloud native tools, getting started with different cloud native tools, and also specific use cases with Sivo and using Sivo within your cluster. So if you have some specific concept idea, some thing, some tool, some tutorial, some platform you want to integrate, then please also make sure to check our guide section and have a look if we made already have some guides on the topic that you can use for your own purposes that you can feed off on um, for your own hackathon project. Now, next we want to go back to our to our dashboard, to our account, and uh, we have here several additional tabs. Now the KubeQuest tab provides you basically with a step-by-step -step guide on how you can get started with Kubernetes and Sivo specifically. If you're completely lost, this is a great place to um, to work with to get started on and to learn more about the Sivo platform and how to use it. So it's basically a getting started guide. You don't have to follow it, but it's really, really handy for you to get started and really explore Sivo and use Sivo to its fullest potential. Now, we also have compute instances. Let's head over to the compute instances. As you can see, I have one compute instance running right now. Uh, this is not something that I'm going to focus on within this tutorial. We have other written tutorials in our guide section, as I just showed you. Um, so make sure to check it out if you want to use our compute instances. Next, uh, we have a suggestions tab. Now, the suggestions tab is for you to provide us with feedback, with thoughts, with ideas for features. In case there are any that you want to have, that you want to see within Sivo, you can let us know over here. Now, additionally to the suggestions tab, you can also join and I highly suggest you to join our Sivo Slack channel uh, where you can ask questions, where you can get involved uh, with the community, where you can provide us with feedback, thoughts. If something is not working, if you have any problems, you can also jump into that channel and let us know. We soon have a refer a friend feature coming up, so stay tuned for that. 
And lastly, we have our account section. Now you will find additional information on the quotas that you currently have in place, meaning how, what kind of instances, what kind of Kubernetes clusters and the cluster size and so on you can spin up. Uh, but the main section over here is, well, first of all, the activity section. So you can see your previous activities within your account. So in case something goes wrong or in case you're not sure what happened uh, throughout your using the account, you can go over here. But the important tab is the settings tab. And now within the settings tab, you can, first of all, specify your personal information. You can uh, update your password details, set up two-factor authentication. And we also have our security tab. And the security tab has your API key. Now, this is especially important once you want to use the Civil CLI, which I'm going to show you in a second, but also if you want to give any external application access to your Civil account. So, for instance, if I want to push information to another application, if I want to use GitHub Actions um, and I want to give that access to my Civil account or any other CSED platform or other tool or other platform to either spin up and provision infrastructure on Civil or to go ahead um, and use information from my Civil Kubernetes clusters or other Civil resources. So that section is particularly important. That's where you can find your API key. Now we head back to our Kubernetes section. As you can see, I have one cluster currently running. That cluster has three compute instances. Now it's cluster size small, three nodes. This is the API version or like the, the Kubernetes version it's using. And we can go ahead and we can create a new cluster. Now, upon you creating a new cluster, you have to provide a name. Example, just an example cluster. Now I can specify the number of compute instances I want to have, the number of nodes I want to have within that cluster. In this case, I'm just gonna specify four nodes. I can use uh, an existing firewall from all of my firewalls that I should probably clean up. <laughs> um, or I can create a new one by default. Now, here you can specify the cluster size. I highly suggest to go for medium clusters because it happens a lot that people choose small clusters and then they spin up lots and lots of workloads and different applications on their Kubernetes cluster. And some of the nodes get into not ready state because their resources are overutilized um, and they can't keep up with the load and then you can't schedule new workloads. So please do go for the medium cluster. For some workloads, you can totally go for the extra small one. Like if you have really small workloads, you can go for the small or extra small one. I suggest you for the hackathon to go for the medium one or for a larger one. Now, here we have our marketplace. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more in detail about the marketplace. It's highly specific to Sivo. You can find lots of different applications from the cloud native ecosystem, from the cloud native environment. You can also find additional tools that are integrated with Sivo right here at the marketplace. Now here you can specify which applications you want to have running on top of your cluster as it spins up. And this is super duper feature because instead of you having to dive uh, through GitHub, Google different applications and find their Helm charts or other resources to install on top of your cluster, you can just go over here into the marketplace and say, hey, I want to spin up the Prometheus operator and my monitoring stack, or I can, I want to use Jaeger uh, tracing, or I want to use uh, DCACD platforms or similar, right? So you can just go here and spin them up on the go alongside your Kubernetes cluster. Now, by default, the Civil Kubernetes cluster will install two applications, the metric server and over here, the traffic. Now, this is part of the K3S Kubernetes distribution that Civil is using, that Civil is based on, or the Kubernetes clusters are based on. Uh, different to um, the upstream Kubernetes distribution, K3S is a lightweight Kubernetes distribution, meaning it doesn't have a lot of the provider specific configurations that upstream Kubernetes has in place. Sivo doesn't make use of that. Like it doesn't make sense if you're not using a specific cloud provider for you to actually use the upstream Kubernetes distribution. Anything you can use on normal Kubernetes, you can also do on Sivo. So it really doesn't, it's not gonna make a difference for you that we use K3S. Just be aware that these two applications traffic and the metric server are going to be installed by default. So if you don't want to have them, you have to turn them off 
that's basically it. Now we're going to go ahead and install the Loki stack on top of our Kubernetes cluster as it spins up. Most Kubernetes clusters take about two minutes to spin up. So we're just going to fast forward until this has finished spinning up. And now it's finished. Awesome. So now here we have our Kubernetes cluster. This is amazing. We have our four compute instances running within a node pool. They are just they are running over here. And now we want to connect to this Kubernetes cluster. Now there are several options that you can connect to. You can either use directly to CLI and I highly suggest you to go to the CLI and install it. Now, with the CLI, you can also spin up Kubernetes cluster directly through uh, the command line, through your terminal. And um, there are other videos and other tutorials and guides that show you specifically how to use it, how to set it up, how to get started with the C4 CLI. So I highly suggest you to check those out. Now, we're going to go ahead and we're going to download our kubeconfig. So we download the kubeconfig and now it will appear within my downloads folder. So in my downloads folder over here, I have now my C4 example cube config, as you can see. Now we're going to open our terminal and have a look at our downloads folder. And here is our cube config. And if you now type export cube config, and we specify the C4 example cube config, it's basically C4, then the name of the cluster that you provided, and then cube config. Now we're connected to that cluster. So I can say kubectl get uh, notes and I see all of my notes that I spun up as part of my cluster. Now I can go ahead and say kubectl get namespace. This will provide me with the different namespaces within my Kubernetes cluster. As you can see here, I have my monitoring namespace and my Loki namespace. Now kubectl get all in namespace Loki will provide me with the information within that of the different resources running within the namespace. As you can see, I have Promptail running here. Promptail is spun up for all of, well, running on each of those nodes. For each node, it's spun up once. And then I have here Loki. That's basically gathering, getting all the logs from Loki. Now I can go ahead and use Loki straight away after I spin up a cluster. Now, additionally, I can open up my repository, something I want to deploy to the cluster. And within the repository, I have a manifest folder. Now, let's have a look at the manifest folder. Manifests. <laughs> and as you can see, I have a deployment YAML file and a service YAML file right here in that folder. Now, I want to deploy both, so I can just get kubectl and then apply. But we need a namespace to apply to. So we create our namespace first. kubectl uh, create namespace. Let's call it app. And then we're going to apply the resources that are in this folder, the deployment YAML file and the service YAML file. So kubectl apply the file, and then we specify the folder. So we're just going to specify manifests, and we want to deploy it to the namespace app. Now this is going to create both my deployment and my service. Now I can go ahead and say kubectl get all in namespace app, and I see all of the resources that are spun up because they're defined within my deployment YAML file, my service YAML file. And this is one way how you can interact with your Kubernetes cluster. Now, you could also use the C4 CLI directly. This is the C4 CLI, and you have several different options. When you first get started, you have to connect to your API key. Now, you can go ahead and say C4 API key list, and I see my different C4 API keys. Now, right now, I'm connected to the demo key. That's right here. Now, I could also say Sivo uh, API key add, and I can add one of my, or like I can add a new API key from my settings, from the security tab within my settings. I can add it right here. Now, this is an old API key. So I'm not going to do that right now. Now, next, I can also specify the region I want to use and interact with through the CLI. So I can say Sivo region list, and I'm currently connected to the London one region. If I'm connected to the Frankfurt region, I might not see the clusters that I have within the London one region. So make sure you're connected to the right region to see your clusters. Now I can say uh, Sivo Kubernetes 
list. And this will give you my two clusters. In this case, I have my, here my example cluster and then here my uh, testing cluster. And I can see the region and the nodes and how many node pools I have and whether those clusters are active right now or what their state is. Now I can also see who Kubernetes create and I can create a new cluster, for example, a demo cluster. I can specify the applications I want to add, the nodes and so on. And I can specify here with merge safe that it should be connected to my existing cube config automatically so I can automatically connect to the cluster. Again, I'm not going to do that. If you want to learn how to do that, have a look at the guide section within the Sivo platform. There are lots and lots of guides that show you exactly how to use the Sivo CLI that provide you with comprehensive information on that. So make sure to check that out. Um, the last thing that I'm going to do here is show you the application. So Sivo, uh, actually, Sivo, Kubernetes, and then applications list and we can see all of the applications that you could deploy on top of your kubernetes cluster as you can see there are quite some quite a few um, that you could use instead uh, or that you can spin up from the marketplace it's similar to the ui just that you can also integrate with the cli with it and spin up your applications and then use them for your project as well now sivo also has a terraform provider it also has a cross-plane provider and you can also use sivo with pulumi if you prefer to use different ways to provision your kubernetes clusters now i hope this little demo was helpful and give you an overview of sivo of the platform and how to get started with our managed kubernetes service if you have any questions please make sure to drop into the sivo slack channel and we're sure to help you as quickly as possible